to these things or else nobody knows what it is. Okay, so um, thank you very much for joining me. And I think the first thing I should really do before we go any further is normally we, we ask people um, if they can write in the chat where they're actually from. So if you could do that, write, write where you're from. But then because this is about multilingualism and about how many languages we all speak, and I see some people there that I know speak multiple languages already here, maybe you would like to actually write down the languages that you speak and that you speak in your family as well. So you can see just how prolific we are as, as a group. Um, now, of course, I, I, I'm the very worst because I'm the worst linguist in the world. So <laughs> we won't talk about other my languages because it would be very embarrassing. Um, the other thing I'd just like to say is I can see that uh, Kauza is here. Um, Kauza actually is a wonderful lady who lives in the UK. And she's been responsible for translating many of the documents in the project and has done a really wonderful job because she's really committed to our project and um, she's uh, also helped with the dissemination of the project in the UK just just because she's committed to bilingualism, multilingualism. So a big hand from me for Kauza. Unfortunately, our other uh, translator can't actually join us, but um, so I want to publicly say a big thank you to Kauza, and I'm very happy that she's joined us. Um, so we can all see the presentation in the middle there, hopefully. Uh, so we'll get on and get on with the, uh, with the presentation. Now the multilingual families uh, project was something that I actually initiated uh, some years ago, um, and it's something that's very dear to my heart. The idea of uh, being able to bring up children bilingually, and I all and my family are actually bilingual as well, and uh, saw many uh, families who weren't doing this very well. So I thought, you know, it'd be great to do this at a, a European level to try and show people how this can be done. And the results of this project we're going to look at now and what, what we've made here. It's quite a lot of stuff. And I don't want it to become too much of a list, uh, this, this uh, presentation. So we're going to play some games and do some stuff as well, see some videos. And let's hope everything works because... Uh, I've been having a few problems with this laptop this week, so we'll see. Okay, so the actual resources we've made have been divided into three areas for families, uh, which includes anybody who's in the situation where they could bring up children as bilingual, uh, obviously immigrants and expats, and I've put a little bit of a list here, you can see the list. But also then we thought it's very important that those families and those children are supported by educators because we find many instances where educators do not understand about bringing uh, children in more than one language and they have many misconceptions. So we made a whole bunch of resources for educators about how they can support the children and support the families in bringing up the children. And finally, we thought it would be very nice if we had some motivational tools for the children as well in a language that they could uh, associate with and appreciate. So that's basically the sort of things that we've developed. Now, all these items are on the internet, and I know there's a lot of links there, but let's hope this works. Is it going to work? Let's see. Oh, yes, there it goes. All right, but don't panic. Because we've actually made, uh, I've actually got a, 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 um, everything, all these links on a document. Now you can download this document from this link here, http backslash tururl.com and then p-e-y-u-v-j-t. And on that document, we're going to have a look at it uh, a, bit, a little bit later, I'll we'll show it in full. I don't want to go to the share screen just yet because there may be a problem there. But if you write down this, you'll be able to get all the links to everything 
that we're going to be showing and talking about today. And I'll put this link into the chat later as well. Okay. Now, the other thing that we've done uh, is actually how many languages that we've actually uh, used in the project, and particularly for the resources for the families. And you can see here that we've got uh, a whole bunch of uh, languages for the families, but maybe we have a little bit of a, a quiz and see if you can identify uh, which is which. So let's start at the beginning. Does anybody know what BKS? I'll put it in the chat. What language is BKS? Or languages? And that's a bit of a clue. It's Karen typing. Let's see if Karen. She says, very good, Bosnian, Croatian, and Serbian. So it's correct. That's exactly right. Uh, no, no, it's not, it's not Slovenian, it's Serbian. Uh, as far as I know. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, and Slovenian. Thank you. Very good. Okay, the next one. And I can't write this, I'm afraid. Uh, this one here. Bulgarian. Thank you, Margit. Chesky. That's pretty easy. Chesky, actually, is uh, Czech. That's correct. Absolute. Uh, this one's a really tough one. What do you reckon? English, maybe? Okay. French, German. Now, the next one is a little bit harder, and it doesn't show on the screen very well. The first one on the second line, which language is this? No, it's not Japanese. Good try, Margaret. Points for effort. <laughs> OK, it's actually, uh, this one is um, Hindi. Because, and I'll just explain how we pick these languages. Um, each of the partners in five different countries looked at the immigrant, the major immigrant groups in, each, in, in their countries, and if we didn't already represent them in the partnership, we chose those two languages. So this was actually came out of the UK, where there's a very large group of Hindi speakers. So let's carry on. Uh, we've got Italian, Polish, Romanian, and then the next one is, with the large, looks like a P, Russian, thank you, Virginia. Uh, you are. <laughs> okay, the next one, Slovensky. Do we need to say? Okay, Slovensky, Slovenian, that is Slovenian. Okay. Espanol, easy. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce Turkish. Uh, Turkey. Okay, the next one, Ukrainian, thank you very much. And the next one, it's very small here, doesn't work very well. It's uh, another language actually from the Indian subcontinent. Ah, now it's interesting you put Arabic because it actually is an Arabic uh, script, but it's actually Urdu. That's correct, it's Urdu. So we've got Urdu. And then the last one is, uh, does anyone know the last one? It's pretty, it's not hard. Okay. I guess you're all going to write Vietnamese. Okay, so we've got Vietnamese. So you can see we've got a very nice broad range of world languages that we've actually translated uh, the resources for, edu uh, for um, families in. Okay, so let's actually look at um, some of those resources. And I think I'm going to go and try to share your screen and just show you the website and see if it's going to work. Now, I'm a bit worried about this because um, I've been having some real problems uh, with my computer this week, and uh, we're going to have to see if it works. So, let's try. I'll give, I'm, I'm going to go try for a short time. If it doesn't work, then uh, I'm going to leave it. And uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I don't think it's happening. Ah, yes, there it is. Okay, so. I hope you can all see this. This is actually what happened. It came back out. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. It is being shared. Not yet. Um, I cannot see anything. It's being shared. And everybody can see this. Not yet. Not yet, Joel. We Not cannot yet. see it. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Second. Yeah, just trying now. Okay. David, can you see? 
No, no, not yet. You have to stop and maybe start again with the sharing. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go back? Be... I think I'm going to leave this because yeah. there is... Uh... doesn't seem to work. Yeah, okay. So I'm not going to do the sharing. I can't get back into the uh, interface now. You will find it. Uh -huh. Okay, so, all right. So let's take that away. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, I'll put the link to the link document up at the end and uh, we'll use that and you'll be able to uh, see all the pages from there. Okay, so for families, um, what we've made is very much focused and at a level, hopefully, uh, for families, uh, as simple as we can, in those 17 languages. Now, in fact, um, we've now got volunteers who are translating it into additional languages as well. Uh, we've had Catalan, we're, ha oops, we're having Greek. Um, we just had Portuguese as well. Uh, so it's and uh, also um, Basque is being done at the moment. So we've we've really gone a long way with the languages that we've actually got these resources for families. Um, the parent guide is a very useful document because it shows how to motivate the children within the family structure, and I think. The nicest thing we've done, or one of the nicest, there's a few lovely things I think we've done here, is these activities for parents to use with their children. And on the website, you'll see there's these two green boxes uh, right the way through the website, uh, which shows the self-access guide and also these activities. Now, the activities have um, been particularly nice, and they're very much about using languages and multiple languages in a setting that's very easy and to do within the family and is fun. And we're going to have a little try ourselves. You're, you're going to have a go. Now, we've never done anything like this before, but this requires actions from the audience. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a text, and whenever you hear a particular word, you're going to do an action. Oh, oh, yes, you are, even though I, well, I, I've got a spy camera, let's say, so I can see if you're going to do it or not. But what you're going to do is when you hear the word man, you're going to wave your arms in the air. Wave arms. Okay? And whenever you hear the word space, you have to stand up and then sit down again. Okay? <laughs> So are you all ready to have a go at this? Somebody say yes, please. <laughs> this is an experiment, okay? All right, thank you, Elizabeth. Very helpful. Okay, let's go. Now, this is a, a children's short story that I actually wrote uh, called The Huge Man. And then it's an, an introduction to the book. And you'll see, and I like doing these things because, you know, we engage each other, we get involved. So here we go. I'm going to be looking at the, my other computer, which is also working, uh, so we can read it. So, man, wave your arms, space, you have to stand up. Okay, here we go. Out in the middle of space lived millions and millions of kilometers from the way from the planet Earth lived a man. Wave hands, wave hands. He wasn't an ordinary man. He didn't live on a nice, warm, green planet like Earth, and he didn't munch on cornflakes and have eggs for breakfast. In fact, he didn't live on a planet at all. He lived in the middle of space, where only dust of stars can be found, and there's no, e no air to breathe, not even a little bit. And the reason he lived in the middle of space was that he was big. He was really big. His hands were as big as a whole country. His feet were the size of seas. He was thousands of kilometers long. He roamed around space all the time. Whenever he got a little chilly, he would wander over to a nearby star 
and toast his hands gently at its warming ways. If he got hungry, he would find a nice juicy planet and munch on it, like you eat an apple. Yet moons for midday snack and meteors like sweets. Okay, now that's that's that. How many of you actually took part and did the actions? Tell the truth. <laughs> or was it just me? Ah, <laughs> uh, great. You're really good. Thank you so much. That's really nice. So from this you can see that um that, uh, these are the sort of activities and that's what we these uh, ideas are and how engaging and fun this you know and it can be done within the family <laughs> you look silly and fudgy kids so what you've got to do Nuno is do it with your children okay and then and you've got to do it with them of course so it'll be fine okay so just to continue on with the talking out sources um, we've got some nice case studies here of families that are multilingual and how they've done it and what they've done in very different settings. So it's very nice to see how other families have done this. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Uh, okay, that was the activity. Now, for educators, and um, by the way, how many of you actually are teachers here? And it doesn't matter if you're a language teacher or any, any teacher. Okay, we've got quite a few teachers in the room. That's great. Um, by the way, if there's uh, questions and things uh, or raising hands, we'll, we'll, I'll come back to it at the end, please. Okay. All right. So what we've done here, we've gone a little bit deeper into the pedagogy and the ideas and the thoughts behind multilingualism. We've looked at the research that's been done here, and there's a lot of work. In fact, this is an area that really interests me. Uh, particularly the neurological aspects of learning languages and there's a lot of work being done in this area because language acquisition in small children is an incredible process and uh, you know we've watched our children learn a language and you know this research says they learn seven words a day if only our language students could learn seven words a day and these are little teeny children at the first stage of their development and they're building languages and the grammar like it's like magic um, and we've seen and with my children who are bilingual they've learned two languages at the same time without any problems at all so it's it's an amazing process and something you know I say that very much interests me and I hope uh, as teachers we can look at these resources that we've got here We've also got activities here, uh, many of them derived from the family's activities that can also be used in the classroom. Um, one of the nice things that we've done is we, if you do have children in your, in your class who are uh, potential bilinguals or are bilinguals, um, there's ways that you can use them to show the other children and also to make these children feel that the, their bilingualism has value and is, uh, is something that the other children, you can say, you're different, but isn't it good? And they should feel good about their bilingualism within their class structure, because we know that peer pressure is very strong on children uh, to conform. So, you know, by having another language, they're not conforming, but here we can show that there's an advantage. Now the last area that uh, is in the resources are the motivational tools we've made for children. Now we've made two e-books and I'm afraid I can't show you them but again in the link you'll see the links directly to the e-books and to the website where you can find them. And there's two e-books, one of which is for the very smallest children where there's some nice videos and very simple activities that the children can use. And by the way, these are all in the 17 languages as well. And the other ebook we've got is for slightly older children. And again, we're looking at how children can motivate each other. And what we've done is uh, we've got children who are bilingual in 17 different languages. We've got children in each of those languages to make very short videos talking uh, very basically about colors and animals. And little 
phrases about being bilingual. Now we're going to try and drag one of those videos in. And uh, David, will this just run it? If I text him. Uh, thank you very much, Martha. <laughs> she did a lovely job. And now we'll have, uh, in Romanian, now we'll have a slightly older girl who's going to do a little bit in Turkish for us about the project. So let's see how it go. There you go. And I think uh, that young lady is actually in Germany. So you can see she's an older girl who's coming from a Turkish immigrant family and she speaks perfect German in school and in her environment and speaks beautiful Turkish as well. So we've got these in 17 languages uh, in the East Europe. They're also on a YouTube um, uh, playlist so you can show these and use these as tools as well. Uh, that children are bilingual. Okay. Now the other major resource that we made in the project is uh, a repository. And you can see the different areas that we have uh, put ideas in. Now these are uh, books and links and articles and websites and web tools, even PhD work uh, and research projects that add to the work that we've done and look at um, multilingualism in many, many aspects in many different ways. Now, it's not complete and it's not totally up to date. Things are moving very quickly in this area, but it's a nice tool to have. And again, that's available on the website there. Uh, and that is a brief look. Unfortunately, we couldn't look at the actual pages uh, today. Um, that's a brief look at the uh, resources that we've made. Hopefully, you'll have a chance to go and have a look. This is the link. I'm just putting it in now. This is the long link to the uh, links page that I mentioned a couple of times here. Um, so you'll just, if you could just click on that or copy that, then that will take you to the links page. And I'll just um, take the link to the website as well. Hopefully I'll be able to do that. Things are going very, very slowly, so it's not quite working. Let's see if I can take it out. No. Yep, here it is. I'll just try and copy that and pop that into the chat as well. Yep, coming up. Yep, that worked. Okay, so those are the two major links you need. Uh, which will tell you um, and give you all the information that we've looked at here today. Now, of course, um, I'd be very happy if you have any questions or you'd like to ask anything about um, the project and multilingualism or the resources that we've made. So please do ask, type in the um, chat here. Yeah. Um, the recording is going to be up, uh, uh, is, is um, being done, and I will be putting it onto the uh, website, uh, also into the Facebook group of the project. You can see that it's Facebook Multilingual Families, and also onto YouTube, so you'll be able to have that for sure. Um, the videos that you see, um, a good question actually, Karen. Um, 
they they're in the ebook, so they can be looked at individually by children. You just give them the link to the ebook, and they're also in a YouTube playlist, so you can actually use those as well. Um, in the uh, the the e storybook, as we call it, which is online, um, there's actually you'll see the words that they use as well. Um, in English and in the language that they're speaking. So, you know, it could be the start of some little activity around the idea of who can try or who could speak Romanian, for example, or let's find another word for a color in Romanian. Uh, I'm thinking off the top of my head now uh, how you could use these as, as a starting point. I see them as a starting point. Um, yes, also, yeah, that's a good point about um, awareness. Yeah, definitely. Okay, is there any other questions uh, anybody would like to ask? I've done a few questions, haven't I? I asked you where you're from, I asked you what languages you speak. <laughs> um, um, any of the people here actually bringing up their families um, bilingually or multilingually? Try. Beta has try. Multi, okay. Great. And uh, Beta, for example, um, oh yeah, Karen has another question. Really? Jennifer, you, you gave it out. That's a shame. So ha ha have a look at, um, yeah, there's a couple of interesting things here. Both of them actually are the same question, but for different sectors. Um, Jennifer says she's, I presume you're uh, a family, Jennifer. Um, okay, there's lots of things. Hang on, hang on, just slow, slow, slow. So I'm going to start with Jennifer because she was first there. Um, I think, Jennifer, you look at what we've written there. Um, there is, in some places, there's resistance to the idea of children being brought up uh, in more than one language. This is a huge fallacy. 50% um, of people in the world are multilingual. You have to look at countries like uh, India and Switzerland and Belgium and Canada where it is normal to be multilingual. And there's no reason at all why we can't do this. Um, and we, we have to fight. In fact, there's prejudice, I would say, against it in some places. We saw that some, I don't know if anybody saw, in southern Germany, some politicians turned around and said that um, immigrant families should actually speak German in their uh, homes. This is a huge mistake and a big fallacy. It's totally wrong. And we do know to fight against this it, literal prejudice um, because it's such an advantage for children to have more than one language in so many ways. Uh, one of the things that's been shown uh, that there's been a large number of studies on the cognitive development of multilinguals. Uh, this is some of the areas I like looking at. Um, and there is research that shows that multilingual children actually do better in their studies and get better results than uh, monolingual children. I, even though there's a lot of studies in this, um, I'm not actually totally convinced because I tend to think the sort of families who do go against perhaps the trend and do bring up their children multilingually are of a certain type of family. So I'm not totally convinced with the data, but it, there is a lot of data out there showing this. Um, now, the other question is how can we support multilingualism of our students? Again, Carla wrote, uh, asked this question. Um, this is precisely what the resources for teachers try to answer, to show exactly uh, things like using children who are multilingual in your class as tools, not tools because that's the wrong word, it's a child, um, as motivators uh, to the other children to show the advantages of um, being multilingual. And some of the activities for the class are precisely this, where the multilingual child actually takes a lead and shows what they can do as a uh, motivator for the other children. Of course, the educators, the other things you can do is convince or argue 
the case for bringing up children multilingually in your area, in your schools, in your authority, if there's resistance, and to try and break down this, um, this barrier and this prejudice. Now I'm gonna, there's a lot of stuff being written here. Uh, it's difficult for children in school, isn't it? I think it very much depends on the school, on the teacher. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it depends on, on the authority. There's many areas that um, come into this. But again, we try to answer some of these questions in the uh, resources we made for teachers, precisely this. Um, okay, I'm now, da, da, da. Uh, Beta says in the beginning they got a lot of catching up to do, but later on they are well ahead. Um, again, I think, Beta, what you're saying there is, is tr true in the instance where a child comes to a new country for that child and they're a bit older. My experiences with children from birth, my, ch my children we brought up from birth as bilingual using a system called OPAL, which is one parent, one language, where each of the two parents just speaks one language to the children. Um, when they got to school, which obviously is the native language, they were fine. They, they, they had no problem. They didn't uh, suffer from not being fluent in the native language, but they were also fluent in the second language, in the second language of the home. Um, Kalza makes, I think, a very good point. She says, parents should be strong and combine their daily routine with activities. I, I totally agree with this. Uh, and again, I've seen this happen in my home, where we were very disciplined in our use of language, where my wife spoke native language and I spoke uh, English to the children. and we were very strict in this, and at meal times that was in the uh, English, which is the non-native language where I speak, where I live, and uh, activities uh, were very important. We had books and videos and TV, and then I actually made a website <laughs> as well called the Kinder Site, which is where the Kinder Site name comes from, um, to support my children by using uh, web games and stories that were on the internet. And we turned that into a website that became very big. So it went, it, you know, all these things, and again, all these ideas and all these thoughts are in the documentation that we've made. And um, I'm just going to try and, uh, did you all get that link to the link document? Is everybody okay with that? Or shall I put it in again? Uh, I could try and pop it in again for you. Oh, Cron says a whole more stuff down here I missed. Um, okay, so I'm just reading through what else to be here. It was nice discussion. Very nice. Now, I like that. And May says my children are very grateful that they're bilingual. Uh, how old are your kids, uh, Mays? Mm. Yes, and Elizabeth says... Uh, her children learnt German in Germany, which is great. Mm, lovely. Okay. Oh, Ranjan is just uh, here. I've just noted Ranjan. I just want to, um, everybody can see uh, Ranjan is just here. Um, I just want to, Ranjan was my other um, uh, translator for the documents. Um, she lives in the UK, and again, as I did with Kauza, I want to very much thank her for the wonderful work that she did and the support and help she gave to me in doing these translations. Um, Ranjan, I think you did Urdu, am I right? No, it's the other way around. Ranjan did Hindi, and Kauza did uh, Urdu. I hope I got that right. So I want to publicly thank Kauza and Ranjan uh, while they're here in front of everybody for the wonderful support and help they gave to this project with their translations. Thank you. Okay. This is a very nice discussion. I don't think I need to go to say anything. What I would like to um, say, because obviously some people may wish to leave the discussion now, but there's, there's a very nice discussion going on here. Um, but this could be in the Facebook page. What I could do is um, initiate and just carry on this. I don't know if that's, maybe I could copy paste some of this chat out and um, actually put it into Facebook. 
uh, as a chat there. So this discussion continue with those who wish to. Um, it's, it's very nice what's, uh, what's being spoken about here. I actually like to let it run on. Karen, you, you asked a nice question about who's going to teach them high-level writing skills. Because uh, I, I actually have exactly this in, in my family, um, where their English reading and writing in, it did lag a long way behind. Their speaking and listening skills were excellent. Um, vocabulary was great, uh, very good, very strong indeed on the vocabulary, but their uh, reading and writing is a long way behind. Um, they did have English at school, and it has improved, um, but I'm finding my children now 15 and 13, I'm actually finding that they're building their English reading and writing skills themselves now. Uh, they're beginning to see their advantages and the reason for doing so. Um, they do have help at school, but you know a lot of it is now becoming self-motivated, particularly reading. Writing, I think, is still a little bit further down the road. But I think when they get to the point where they need it, uh, say it when they get to university or when they start traveling, I think um, that will be the big biggest motivator for them. Well, I think this. You know, one of the things we bring out in our documentation about the motivation, um, and I see you, you, you agree, Karen. Uh, do you think they'll be able to go to university, for example? Yeah, um, I, I hope so, yes, uh, I agree with that. Um, it, it's a hope, but I think they will get there. Um, where was I? Yeah, motivation, uh, because at certain points as they grow up, they're, they're going to perhaps get less motivated to continue in English. I saw this daughter who's now 13 when she was about 11. Um, I actually brought in also the family as a motivator, family and friends. Unfortunately, they have relatives in Canada and in England. And when they visit, they get uh, English with them. And they very much see the advantages of English. And also, my girls are lucky that in their schools, there's quite a few native English speakers as well who are also bilingual. And it's quite interesting because my daughter went to her high school this year. And the first children that she made friends with were actually bilingual children. Uh, not that they spoke English to each other, but they found some common, common ground in how they were brought up and how they are as families. So, you know, th these things do matter. Um, Beta brings up some also nice things about being able to, yeah, which is something, yes, about using writing and reading emails from relatives. It's something I personally use a lot uh, because they use telephone, and on the telephone, they wouldn't necessarily uh, use the other language. Joel, do you, Karen says, um, Joel, do you agree with me that it's easy to have a high motivation with English, but maybe a lower motivation with another language? Um, I think it very much depends on the family, Karen. Um, for example, you know, if we take, say, a Turkish family who are living in Germany, um, there's very much a community of Turkish speakers there, um, a very close uh, family ties with family in Turkey. I've actually been on flights from Istanbul into Europe and sat next door to Turks who are living in Germany and spoken to them, young people. And, um, you know, they're, they're very much motivated through their family backgrounds to speak uh, Turkish. Um, obviously, I think every, every family is a slightly different case. Uh, thank you, Georgia. Um, okay, well, I'm just reading what you said. Yeah, and as uh, Joy says, of course, it depends on the country as well. Um, I see Paul, uh, it's a really nice discussion going on here. Um, and uh, But I think maybe we uh, should at least stop the recording for now. Uh, so I'm going to stop that recording. And David will keep it for us. We'll put it up later.
Um, I'm very happy for this to carry on. If people want to carry on discussing, that's great. Uh, we can carry this on. David, if you could please make sure to copy this, this chat, because I think it's a very nice chat here going on. Um, people are very welcome to carry on or leave or whatever you wish. Oh, I'll tell you what I could do. I'll just go back to some of the other links um, so you can see them on the screen if you want. Well, there you go. So hopefully you can see those links as well if you like. Uh, okay, Kowser makes a very nice uh, suggestion, a Skype breakfast. Oh, Joy's... Uh, By SLI org parents. That looks nice. Yes, Joy, thank you. Okay, uh, so I, I'm going to let this carry on. I'll listen and watch. Um, I just want to go and get myself a glass of wine. <laughs> I need it after this. Uh, thank you, everybody, again for uh, coming. I hope uh, you'll download the resources and you'll find ways to use them. And uh, I think it's up to everybody and all of us to push for um, particularly in education to promote bilingualism and uh, multilingualism as a wonderful present that we can give to our children. Okay, so I'm going to let you carry on if you want to leave, if you want to stay, it's fine. If you want to talk, it's great. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Carla, Maisie, Beta, everybody for contributing. It's, it's been a really nice uh, webinar. Thank you. Just going to get my wine. <laughs>
in said shares in their language. And that just goes to show people's attitude. This guy then says, well, here we say cheers. She was very upset about it, that we did it in all our own languages. <laughs> so there you go. There's uh, multilingualism not in action. It's a true story. True story. Okay, so I'm going to sign off everybody. Uh, thank you very much for attending the webinar. I think the discussion has been really, really nice. A really nice discussion. Hopefully, um, uh, we'll have something to take home with us. And um, so it's bye from me. And thank you very much for joining me. And I'm going to. I'm actually going to close the webinar. Uh, I'll just check with David. Uh, the recording is okay. And the chat. Is it possible, uh, David? Can you copy the chat? It's okay. Ah, yes, we've all got to say in different languages. Okay, thank you, David. Okay, so thank you very much again. And good night and have a good evening, everybody. Bye. David, um, should I come back to you on Skype or shall we continue here? Just a second.